Hi everybody, welcome back to Fresh Outlook. Uh, we are knee deep in a debate about the topic of gun control and the aftermath of the tragedy in Connecticut. It's a topic that everybody's talking about. Uh, take a look. The horrific mass murder of 20 children and six adults in Connecticut has lawmakers in Washington, D.C. calling for action. Among them, California Senator Dianne Feinstein. Bill I'm going to introduce in the Senate, and the same bill will be introduced in the House, uh, a bill uh, to ban assault weapons. And it will ban the same for big clips, drums, or strips of more than 10 bullets. The federal assault weapons ban expired in 2004. Since then, the powerful NRA and pro-gun lobby have successfully discouraged any new laws. They're branded extraordinarily well, they're funded extraordinarily well, and a lot of constituents um, of many congressmen and senators across the United States are, are uh, belong to the NRA, and as a result, they really have an enormous political uh, force here in town, and that's been a true hang-up to get a, lo a lot done. Mm. Wow, so much to get to. Uh, before we continue the conversation, I want to introduce a special guest we have on set with us, Barry Danilian. He's a, f a father, a martial arts expert, rather, also a firearm owner. So welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, glad to be here. <laughs> glad you could be here. Uh, what, how do you feel? I mean, we've also, well, we've also been give, all been giving our opinions. Yeah, so I'm, I'm curious, I'm, I'm as, horrif as an owner. I'm okay. horrified like everybody. Right. I mean, um, my reason for being here is to perhaps perhaps give a different view of gun owners. I'm not, a, I'm not an NRA member. I never have been. I don't really subscribe to their brand of politics. To be honest with you, I think really they, they have become a vehicle for gun manufacturers to yeah. paint mm. a picture of guns and, you know, sexy, have more guns, you know, that Got type of thing. Get your man card. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, I, I, I mean, American. so, so mm. I don't belong to that. I don't subscribe to that view. I, I own, my interest in guns came out of my martial arts training, mostly for home protection. That's the only legal realm that I could use the gun in. I had to go through a full background check. Fingerprinting took me five months, an interview with the police officer. Oh, well, that's refreshing. Um, I think that should be the least that <laughs> people should mm -hmm. be required to that. do. Mm -hmm. um, we have to do that to drive cars. Mm -hmm. So, right. we, so, so that should be in place. That to me seems reasonable, and I would, I would put out there. I think most gun owners that I know agree with that. Do you know anyone who's gotten a seventy-four percent of gun owners? In the NRA, seventy percent. Yeah, of the NRA I, I, I think that's a no-brainer, and that should be implemented immediately. Well, I read that uh, forty percent of gun owners don't have to go through background checks. I mean, forty percent of the sales of guns. Yes, that's right. right. Yes, you that's do not have to have the gun any, show thing. The gun, the gun show and the internet. The, I mean, the gun right. show loophole is the, also right. Right. I mean, and this whole idea when the assault weapons ban expired. I mean, there were so many loopholes in that law, right. Swiss cheese and how guns were being changed, little asterisks. And, uh, it, the whole, so to me, passing well, that again doesn't really mean that anything's going to Well, today. we have to be concerned about that. You're right, because the technology and the gun manufacturers mm -hmm. can outpace the law. Sure. Right, they're but, subverting but, but, the system it, in a lot right, of ways. But, yes. but, the, but the ban wasn't robust enough to begin with. We've got to right. have a different kind of assault weapons ban. In place. The other about, thing about the yeah. assault ban was that weapons that looked a certain way that weren't necessarily high capacity were right. put on the list right. and other weapons that right. were actually very high right. capacity and could do a lot of damage well, were not on the it, list. Why so I think did that the happen, Barry? Well, I think a lot of it, is, it ties into the same thing. It's a way to kind of skirt around th these issues in terms of, you know, this is big money. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, the it's military arms is huge yeah. money. So ultimately, yeah. was it a lobby function? Well, I, I, I think so. Absolutely. I think it definitely was. I think the assault ban is a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. To me, as a gun owner, as a martial artist, as somebody who's concerned with people's right to be able to protect themselves, yeah. I just see, I've heard no convincing argument, especially in the urban environment. I exactly. live in Jersey City. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why anybody needs an automatic weapon right. to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, what you're legally allowed to own is sufficient. I mean, if it's that bad, you're in, you know, all hell is yep. broken loose. Mm -hmm. and, and Let you me know. throw this one out here, and I'm playing devil's advocate, and I don't even believe this, but the fact is that if you're looking at Second Amendment rights in this country, and the ownership of firearms is all about defending yourself against an unjust government, then isn't that justification for people having powerful weapons? I don't how advocate often, for it. Like how often are you assaulted by a man? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, for, for me, that yeah, I, I and agree. If you're going up against the government with a pea shooter, what's, what? Do you, I mean, so <laughs> well, I, I agree. I mean, I mean, you know for, for me but personally, I, I I'm believe. I'm not trying to give any good ideas to the NRA. My but sole but reason, and I think. Probably the sole, I mean, there are people that are competitive shooters that compete as let a sport. The gun, let the gun ranges right. own those guns. Right. Then. There are right. people that are hunters. Fair enough. There are also people that are collectors. Fair enough. For me and most of the people that I think that I know that own guns, it's purely for a specific scenario, and that's it. 
I can't go out in the street and use my gun. I can only defend my property. And even then, I can only do it mm -hmm. up until the point that there's no longer a threat. And then I have to stop. But your opinion is very important because you're not somebody who poo poos guns altogether. You're somebody that actually sees their value, their mm -hmm. merit, and is willing to go through the safeguards to get them legally right. and to use them appropriately. Well, I, so I, your I, point I, is not the guy we're worried about. No. Look, but I mean, I had a, I lived in a house with, uh, you know, we had loaded guns and, 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 really? and gifted. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, this was not, this was something that I came. To. I mean, when I lived in upstate New York, um, you know, I was introduced uh, as a young reporter at the time mm -hmm. to the NRA and doing a fair and balanced story on them. And I w got a lot of nice feedback from them afterwards to say that, in fact, I didn't paint them out to be some terrible group or organization because I was very much in touch with the fact that all of my friends and family that lived there were people who owned guns because they did like to hunt and mm -hmm. were, you know, going out for, you know, quail and deer and that kind of thing and venison and would take their, take their guns with them uh, over to California. I had loaded guns in my house. House, uh, gifted one for Christmas. Do you, um, it is a personal question. Do you, you don't have to answer. Do you own a gun now? Not since you grew up with guns? No, no, okay. I didn't. No, I didn't grow up with guns. As okay. a child, I didn't grow up with guns. But in my time in upstate New York, I, okay. I live with them. So I guess what I'm getting at is, is I can tell you, as somebody who's lived with a gun in the house with a lot of friends that have also gone out there and hunted, I respected their position. However, I can also tell you that alternatively, some of those very same people who had some issues, who had guns in their home. Uh, ended up in a double suicide wow. uh, a couple Sorry. of years ago. And that's and much so, more likely than defending right. your home. The statistics say that it's much more likely that there'll be an accident, that there'll be some form of domestic violence. You know, right. the number one form of killing pregnant women is death by mm -hmm. homicide with a gun. Wow. Right? So, so there's. Well, look they're, at they're, 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 mother. They're, I mean, even though true. we should have the right to defend our homes, and, and we should have a right to sort of rise up against the government. Those are not really the issues here. Mm -hmm. They're simply not the issues. The proliferation of guns has led to a frequency of these kinds of mass shootings. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. That's what needs to be addressed. Yes. Well, we don't want to infringe on anybody's rights, just, but we have to keep the issue centered on what we're talking about. We were just discussing this earlier, aside from guns. Federal, instead of armed guards in schools, how about federal marshals like we do on planes? Uh, maybe I they're in disguise. I don't think that's the answer. I, I, don't, think, I don't think that I don't could think hurt. That's I don't the think that's the answer. But let's segue for a moment. I do want to talk about mental health because a lot of People are saying this isn't just about mm -hmm. gun control, it's about mental health. Perhaps if Adam Lanz's mother was on a list that she had a son that had mental health issues, she would not have been able to own those guns. And I think that's the kind of, uh, those are the kind of policies we need to implement. Common How do you guys do yeah, yeah, more comprehensive Common background check. Safety. I mean, the other thing too, and this is maybe just a, a real overview of the whole thing, I think as a, as a nation, we have to ask the question, why have we become so violent? Exactly. Why Is, have we, are video games to blame solely I mean, video I, games? I, I, I'm not sure it's one thing. I think, and, that, and that's the difficulty to me with this issue is that there's so many, you know, crime, poverty, economic injustice, you know, all yeah. these things, mental illness. Other the countries access. aren't as violent. Right. Yeah. The yeah. number one thing that distinguishes us from everyone right. is the proliferation of guns. Right. I mean, you know, again, 5% of the world's population, we own half the damn guns. Right. That is insanity. Well, Switzerland, Finland, almost as much per capita as gun ownership, a fraction of the violence. Canada, a lot of guns, fraction of the violence. I mean, I think there is... There is something inherent that is American permeating psyche. our culture. Mm -hmm. What do they mm -hmm. attribute it to? Well, when you ask foreigners, what's well, wrong well, with America? I'll tell you from what a marketing perspective, from the Bushmaster, which is, you know, all of these rifles are beginning to be pulled off the shelves or they've taken down mm -hmm. some of their advertising at the Walmarts and the Dick's. They've all been it. sold out, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. but, but, the, but they've also... Circulation. The, Right, and, and like I said, gun you know, sales go are, up when mass shootings but, go up. But yes. in the advertising and marketing materials, mm -hmm. they're trying to market to your man card. They're trying to give you authority. They, they're trying to give you, you know, this is the mm -hmm. American dream. I'm a guy. I have testosterone. I want to protect my family. I want to make sure that but, nobody but gets hurt. But there are guys with testosterone in other countries. I, so they, why is it so prevalent here? Well, what I'm saying is, is that they're preying on that in our American mm -hmm. psyche. You could, mm -hmm. you could, you could start to blame anything. You mm -hmm. could blame mm -hmm. feminism. Right. You could say okay. that, you know. Mm -hmm. But I, I can't give you that answer. I can tell you that that's the marketing and that's the, the psyche that's okay. going into folks and so when you t look at some people that may be a little bit more on the outside a little bit more loners and stuff they're also marketing to them too like right. hey you can instantly get power your yeah. authority and your power and I don't agree with it at all yeah. but in much the same way that the women's beauty industry promises a better life if you do this or that to your hair great to analogy your body, Francesca you know I think point. that they're kind of using yeah, the gun, I, listen, the gun industry to do that I don't want to talk about like great video point. games and the culture of violence which is also very I don't want to talk about those things until we get common sense 
there's gun safety laws in place because yeah. that's the predicate. Yeah. Well, once we do that, then yeah. we should continue right. the conversation and well, talk about all these other things. I, we talk about mental health. Remember, even though all of these shooters have mental health challenges, only about one to two percent of the mental health population is ever going to be violent. So right, about thirty percent of Americans have mental health challenges. We need to address that, but that's not really the so central what's the issue. What's the solution here. to making well, it safer? Well, Vice President Joe Biden and this task force are going to have to come up with these recommendations that Obama laid out for January. So the question is, is that are they really going to limit it pretty much to assault weapons, or are they going to go right. further and deal with more of the handgun issue? That's kind of the question that I had, because I have no doubt they're going to go back to where we were with the uh, mm. you know, assault weapons ban that expired in 2004. My question is, is how much further are they going to go in terms of the, yeah. the they pistol? Close we the need gun major, mm -hmm. we yes. need major federal reform. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this, this is a federal issue. This isn't a state, state issue, in my personal opinion. W.J., you haven't said a word in, in like three minutes. I've been awfully quiet on this. I, I, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm, you know, I, maybe I should share some of the thoughts I'm having. I actually, oh, I, I can't document this, but I was reading actually an expert on mass murder who was talking about, actually he's a professor at Northeastern in the 80s. I, I, I wish I knew his name. But anyway, he said actually part of the confusion or part, part of the issue, the, the, the psychological profile of people involved in these kinds of crimes is a, actually is a, is, a, is a sexual confusion. And I think that that's something that actually we breed in this country quite, quite a bit. Kind of this prudishness, you know, the, the, the way that we go about actually dealing with, with uh, our sexual identities, uh, the way uh, children are taught about it and so forth. Th this is actually part of the equation. And I'm some not, form of repression. That some goes kind on. of repression. Sure. And then what you were talking about, the testosterone thing, I'm a man, I got a gun. Sure. This is part and parcel of that. When I think about that, the kid in that house, L L Lanza, what's his name? I'm yeah. blocking his name. In terms of his... There had to be some gender confusion there. I'm sorry. The, the look of that boy, I'm sure he had never had a sexual experience. I think that's something that looking at that, that's part of the profile I think needs to be looked at very carefully. Yeah. I want to throw Barry. something out just, just quickly, just based on my own experience as a martial arts teacher. Um, I've had a lot of kids over the years show up from the hood, a lot of anger, a lot of kind of f trying to find what, what you talked about, the kind of misguided male ego. After about two weeks of training, that starts to go down. Mm -hmm. That's right. After about a month of training, they start to have better manners. Mm -hmm. They start to be more polite. They do better, mm -hmm. in, they do better in school. Mm -hmm. I think that there is this natural yeah. kind of rite of passage type of thing that a yeah. lot of cultures had inherent in the culture. Mm -hmm. We've kind of thrown that away. I think what's replaced it is, you know, Black Ops, three video mm -hmm. games. Sure. That's not the main thing, but that's just a component of a real multifaceted mm -hmm. right. problem. Well, can Sorry, I throw one no, so I, yeah. I'm just saying that I've seen effective transformation, mm -hmm. whether it's martial arts or whether it's sports or whether it's right. music mm -hmm. or whether it's something, mm -hmm. you know, if we invest in those things, mm -hmm. I think a lot of the temperature starts to go you down. You bring up a good Aaron. point because yep. that's a, a good transitional mm -hmm. point because mm -hmm. we're talking about this sort of death toll, but I, I mm -hmm. want to uh, change the conversation to talk a little bit about the emotional toll when you have a tragedy of this magnitude and the trauma and uh, how we're dealing with it, how kids deal with it. Uh, Post-traumatic stress disorder seems to be uh, a topic a lot of people are talking about. Take a look. The Newtown, Connecticut massacre has left a wake of political discussions in its path from gun control to mental health. But another issue that's not being covered on the 24-hour news cycle is the emotional issue. As the nation mourns, struggling with shock and the grief of this horrific event, the question on every parent's mind is, what do you say to your kids? How do you reassure them that they're safe after such violence, while still honest with them about the reality of the world? So you remind them that there are adults out there whose job it is to keep them safe, whether it's policemen, their school principal. Trauma to children and adults can have a lasting impact and in some cases lead to long-term problems. Experts say that millions of Americans may be suffering from some form of traumatic stress disorder. What are the symptoms and what are the ways to get help? Really good questions. Experts say about half of the children who witnessed uh, the Sandy Hook shootings firsthand will experience yeah. some kind of uh, stress oh, disorder. Sure. Half at sure. least. At least. Um, sure. And it, it, so again, these questions, how, how do you handle it? How do you talk to children? And you just, you just mentioned something very, very personal if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, I was carjacked at gunpoint, um, you know, and, and fortunately for me, I was trained and I was able to defend myself and, and you know, but I mean, it took a couple years before the trauma of running, you know, wow. what if my kid had been with me? And what if this mm -hmm. and what if that? Mm. Um, you know, it's very traumatic to go through that. And I went through it being a person at that point who had been 20 years into martial arts and was pretty well trained <sighs> to be able to deal with the stress of that situation. So I can only imagine what somebody mm -hmm. going through something like that with or no training or how a kid. How did you get through it? I mean, how did you get well, through this, the PT? You know, uh, 
It just took a long time. I think at the time, I, w I didn't realize how traumatized I was. Mm -hmm. Now, right. looking back in reflection, right. I probably should have gone and, and mm -hmm. got some counseling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, But I think I threw myself into my work and into training, and it just sure. kind of worked its way out. Y you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I dealt with it. Yeah. Maybe right. not in the best way that I could have in hindsight, mm -hmm. but I did deal with it. But I was a grown adult and a trained martial artist right. and could reason it all out pretty right. well. Right. Right. And if you um, wrong. So, so uh, on that note, uh, in terms of a uh, tragedy of the scale, what do we say to our kids? I uh -huh. mean, this is a big topic. How do we handle it? Uh, James, you, I know you have kids. Did I you do. talk to them about this? Yeah, I did. I, I, we didn't expose them to too much of the media, but you definitely have to talk to them about it. And um, I think you have to be honest with your kids about, about where we are as a nation and, and help mm -hmm. them to understand that these kinds of things sadly and tragically do happen. I think you have to also sort of you know, understand what's going on in the community of Newtown, which is we have an entire community now that in some ways is experiencing a collective mm -hmm. post-traumatic stress right. syndrome. And so, like, for instance, the, w them having to see LaPierre on, on, on his presser yesterday is, is an awful thing for them to have to see. And that's mm -hmm. why you saw them respond Protest. the way they respond. Mm -hmm. What they need is to continue to get the national outpouring of, of compassion and of solidarity. And really, what will really help that community and even help all of our young people who are seeing this is for them to see that as a nation, we can actually make some real changes in these Areas. I mean, that would help to heal a lot of the folk who are witnessing this and who are terrified by what goes on in this right. country. Well, I mean, right kids now. are resilient. Most kids are they resilient. Are. I mean, they, sure. a lot of these experts are saying, in terms of talking to them, make analogies that mm -hmm. maybe like a, a toy is broken, it's not fixable. That you but know, a lot of times when happened. you go ahead, is that you're laughing? Tell me. I don't know. I just feel like I never get called on unless I raise my oh. hand. Anyway, WJ. I'm gonna, hey, I'll on, tell you. WJ. I got two sons. Okay, they're in their mid twenties, thirties. Uh, if this had happened now, with my, if they were younger right now, I would never candy coat any part of this. Yeah, you just tell Life me. is filled with trauma. The, 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 actually, perhaps the most traumatic thing we ever experience is birth. And all of us guts through it, not to mention the conflicts of developmentally that we go through. And that's part and parcel of actually developing our humanity, mm -hmm. is getting through tough times, making sense of it, and growing from the experience. Now, I'm not saying uh, th th these are horrible. What happened in Connecticut is, is absolutely horrific. But I'm going to tell my kids, if I have uh, my six-year-olds, I'm going to say, you know what? There's a bad, bad guy out there. They got the bad guy. Guess what? There's more bad guys out there. And you need to be, be able to run, <coughs> read situations, and even if somebody, even if an adult tells you to line up, if you feel in your heart that you need to run, scatter, and hide someplace because there's a bad situation unfolding, do that. I'm going to teach them to mm -hmm. actually trust their intuition yes. and to trust themselves in situations yes. that, where their lives could be at okay. stake. So, WJ, so you wouldn't sugarcoat it. Uh, let's take a look at how uh, they're dealing with uh, the children in Connecticut in terms of giving uh, them some therapy. Check it out. Desks and chairs from Sandy Hook Elementary will be transported to their new school in Monroe to accommodate the students. Tradesmen in the community have donated their services to ensuring everything is ready for the new intake of children. At the very least, want to give the children the opportunity to, to see their new school and, and to become com more, you know, as comfortable as they possibly can in that, in that new area. As children headed back to school, volunteers with their therapy dogs descended on the town to offer residents a soothing way to cope with such horrible tragedy. We're here because of the un tremendous amount of sadness that we have in this area. And therapy dogs definitely help when people are stressed and are in a crisis situation and are sad. Sister Mary Foley, who is a member of the Therapy Dog International Group, explained that therapy dogs respond to post-disastrous situations. So the purpose of the dogs is just to let people, children, people, young and old, pet the dog, see the dog, just pick up the unconditional love that dogs have for them. <laughs> and we're talking about a very cute note. Uh, talking about therapy, uh, a lot of people still feel that there's a, an existing stigma about therapy. It's something you want to hide, um, but it, yeah. it's important that therapy, if you need it, get it. There's nothing yeah. to be ashamed of. We all um, need it. Everybody could use some therapy. That's Francesca, you, you were saying you have a personal. Uh, yeah, story just to share. A, a, a couple of things. Um, you know, one, I've been to therapy before, and it helped me get through a very traumatic experience in my life. It was nonviolent insofar as a gun was concerned, but it was extremely shocking. Uh, it, I was engaged to be with somebody, and two days before the wedding, he broke up with me. Oh, my. And it took a long time after seven years of planning a life with someone and wow. buying a house together and preparing for that to sort of reconstitute myself and kind of figure out what the next steps were going to be. So that was a very traumatic experience that did take several years, including years in therapy, to get over 
over. But as far as the children are concerned that are dealing with this particular thing, I think that, uh, you know, there is a lot of things we can do. Promote safety, a calming sense, a knowing sense of, like, the kids have a safe mm -hmm. place to go, that they're okay. We can continue to try to foster connectedness and community. And we can also answer the questions they ask us. It's good to not talk about it too much. Mm -hmm. It's good to sort of bring forward the question, I mean, the, the answers to the questions that they do have, but to not necessarily bombard them. A sense of getting back to normal is important, but you can't negate what actually happened. Right. You certainly can't ignore it, because what will happen is down the line with post-traumatic stress, people then end up getting into things that they don't want to get into, drugs and alcohol, mm -hmm. other kinds right. of addictive behaviors, even if it's food or shopping or gambling. Mm -hmm. And those are the kinds of ways that people deal with stress when they don't really ultimately, you know, get to the bottom of whatever the issue is. Right. And so mm -hmm. it has a ripple effect. Effect. So those are the kinds of things you want to prevent for the children's future so they're healthy adults emotionally mm -hmm. as we go forward. Right, and just instilling hope and I agree, I mean the worst thing we could do is just sort of try to pretend that nothing happened. We need to explain mm -hmm. it in a way that, you know, when my little niece lost uh, her grandpa, she knows that, that Papa Jack's in heaven. She yes. knows what it is. And again, had we not have, again, looking down the road, how mm -hmm. would you be affected? Hey, where's Papa Jack? You know, you, you got to sort of condition them. So uh, I wish we could go on. But uh, WJ, you will be the first to speak in the next uh, <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. Oh, I'm going to keep them, WJ. Just you wait. Uh, on a much, much lighter note, uh, it's time to switch gears and talk about the holiday season. After all, a wise man once sang, it's the most wonderful time of the year, right? Up next, we're going to look at some of the things that bring people together during the winter months. And we'll also have your interfaith holiday guide. You won't want to miss that. Stay with us. You're watching Press Outlook. Fresh talk.